Freshly installed, Movizu finally appears on our screen. On the left side are some pre-made sets from the developers, which are perfect for practicing some of the functions you will learn in this course later on. But for now, we create an empty set. That's like a completely blank room, which immediately reminds me of my first student flat. Before we start creating a character and scene, we open the options and make sure we choose the latest DirectX version and set the code it to uncompressed so that our shots won't suffer any loss of quality. You can also change your language if necessary. To move around, use the keys W for forward, A for sliding left, S for backward, and D for sliding to the right, which should sound pretty familiar to all gamers. While we press one of the directional keys, hold down the right mouse button and move the mouse to tilt our view in a certain direction. This may be a bit unusual the first time, but you get used to this kind of movement pretty fast. In the upper navigation bar, you find the different tools and menus we will work with from now on. Click on Create and Character to open an overview with all available 3D models included in the software. With a double click on the boy model, we place the character in our current scene. And with another double click directly on the model, his properties menu opens and we now can make all kinds of optical changes and adjustments. Take some time to go through the available options and adjust him until you would like to proceed. By the way, a lesson I had to learn the hard way don't forget to save your project by selecting File and Save whenever you make a lot of changes to your scene. Movizu does not have an autosave function, so in case of a program crash, your progress will be lost. It's now time to let him perform a first action. Make sure the character is selected and open Direct, then Character Actions. What opens now is your clipboard. In each of these fields, you can store a different character animation you want your boy model to perform in the current shot. To change them, click on the button, switch to prepare. Now we can also change the initial mood and let your character either sit or stand. Some animations are specific to a sitting character and some to a standing character. Click on one of the nine fields in the clipboard and the action window will open. There are countless animations for each character, which you can preview by clicking on the name tag. On the left side, all the actions are also split into different categories and moods like happy, sad, or angry. Furthermore, there are a lot of additional animations for all kinds of purposes, and I would recommend to get familiar with some of them. In the search bar, you can also filter for specific terms. Let's start with something simple and let the character wave. Choose All to filter for a term in all subfolders and then type in Wave in the search box. Select the wave animation. Now we actually have to film the action like on a real movie set. Press Switch to Direct and the project timeline opens. This is where we can now record the animation. You can display the timeline according to various specifications. By default, it should be set to FPS, meaning frames per second. But I find working with the actual time to be more comfortable and helpful. To do this, click on the small cogwheel in the upper right corner of the timeline and switch to show time. All right, now click on the big red record button, which starts a three second countdown. Then we press the wave button we just added to our clipboard and let the character wave. To end the recording, press the square stop button. Now the action has been recorded and we can reposition it anywhere on the timeline as desired. With the left click in the timeline or the playback controls, we navigate back and forth 
Let's go to the beginning and play the action once more. Great! It is time to create our first small set. Movizu offers a lot of content to do this. Let's start by opening the Edit Environment window. Right-click on an empty space in the project or use the navigation bar. You'll find it under Edit. Open Sky and Ground. In an empty scene, a white texture is set there by default. Click on it to open a new window where we can set either a different color or texture. Switch to Textures. Click on Skies and choose one that fits your scene. Under Import, you can also upload and use your own image. Now, we follow the same procedure again to add a ground. Only this time, we select Ground under Textures. Close the window. Now open Create and Objects through the upper menu bar. This is Movizu's huge library from which we can choose many different 3D objects and content to work with in the scene. Again, divide it into different categories. Feel free to check out some stuff first and then open the category City. Select the bench and bring it into the scene by clicking on Create or double clicking. The bench falls directly in front of us and can be moved in the scene by selecting it once and holding down the left mouse button while moving the mouse. By holding down the right mouse button, it can be rotated. By holding down both mouse buttons, you can lift the object up and down. You will be able to switch between the mouse commands with some practice. Place some more suitable city objects in the scene. By the way, you can undo or redo your last action by using the arrows in the upper right corner. And if you should have trouble finding a certain object in the scene, you can open the Projects Overview by clicking on View and then Show Scene Window. If you get the error message, not enough room, when creating a slightly larger object, zoom out a little with the mouse wheel or the S key to create more distance to the ground and try to insert the object again. Objects also offer various options to be edited. Double click on an object to make adjustments. Under Properties, you can edit the colors of the object or make it invisible. Under Physics, you can set whether the character should be able to stand on the object or fall through, if it should float or be held upright. Let's stay realistic and out of defiance, knock over this trash can as an example. Under Scale, you can either change the proportions evenly and make the object bigger or smaller. Or, by deselecting the anchorage, you can only change single proportions like length or width. Be careful when doing this, because if you scale up the object next to another object, it can also be affected. Under Lighting, you can deactivate the object's shadow. Press Reset to bring back the object to its initial look. You can prevent to accidentally move an object by blocking it with a right click and choosing Lock. Hold the Control key and select several objects with the left mouse button. Then group them by right clicking and Group. This allows you to move several objects in the scene at once. Now let's place a light. Open Create again and then Lights. You can choose between a point light, which illuminates a certain area, a directional light, which acts as a global light and is best used to emulate day or night settings, and a spotlight, which pretty much acts like an actual stage and theater lights. I wouldn't recommend using the three dark lights on the right. With these, you can cast dark spots and shadows, but neither are they looking good, nor do they always work, 
and can also cause some visual bugs in the scene. Depending on how we direct the light, the shadows of the characters and objects are cast. In the advanced module, we will go deeper into the details. For this scene, a simple point light is sufficient. By double-clicking on the light, we have the possibility to change properties like brightness, color, and distance, and we can also choose to let the light flicker. You can use multiple lights to achieve great color schemes. Finally, we add some realism to the scene. One walks comfortably through the park on a Sunday morning. And what do you have to see? This bench is on fire. It may sound like a new Alicia Keys song, but instead of starting to dance, we open Create and Effects. From a dust storm to spooky fog, we can find a dozen of useful effects here, which can be inserted into the scene the same way as objects. Select the big fire and drag it to the bench. By double-clicking on the fire cube, you can also adjust various settings. Let's turn the intensity up to full power. You may have noticed the camera window, which takes up to a third of the monitor, but has been completely ignored by me until now, even though it's not my tax declaration. This window is our eyes in Muvizu. By moving the camera, we can choose a spot and composition that we later render out as a single scene. We move and rotate the camera in the same way as other objects by holding down the left or right mouse button or both to lift it up and down. Now, let's bring the camera into a position that captures the whole chaos, like this. Select Tools in the menu bar and then Timeline. Make sure to enlarge the camera window by dragging the lower right corner so you can actually see what's going on. Then jump to the start and press play. Very good. Now let's render out the scene so that we can use it later in the editing software. In the timeline, we see two white markers, which fill the area between them red. This is our selected area. Nothing outside this area will be rendered when saving the shot on your computer, which means the action, the character as he waves in front of the burning bench, must be within this red area. For example, here, the waving is within the range and will be rendered. Here, it is outside the range, and all we would get after saving the file would be a character doing nothing. Since rendering can take some time depending on your hardware, it is always recommended not to select a larger area than necessary. In this case, we only want to save the waving, so we drag the two markers close enough to the action. After finalizing the settings, click on Video and Make Video in the menu bar. We already selected an area to be saved but you could also enter a start and end point in minutes and seconds. Below this, Muvizu will show us the full duration of the scene. On the right side, you can now set the resolution of the scene. The higher the resolution, the higher the quality of the clip. 1280 by 720 would be high definition. 1920 by 1080 full HD and in 3840 by 2160 you can even render out 4K shots. But don't forget that with the higher resolution, it will also take longer to render the file. And if you already own the full version, remove the watermark. Set the highest bitrate and anti-aliasing under Advanced. As output type, you can use the MP4 or AVI file format. I prefer MP4. After we prepared everything, click on Make Video to select the location for the file. Muvizu will now start rendering the file. If the file was successfully rendered, you will receive a notification. Close the window. What you may want to know 
is that Movizu offers the possibility of creating multiple cameras in the scene to cut between them in the software itself. Due to the fact that this not only becomes very confusing, requires a lot of performance, and also becomes very annoying if you want to adjust something later. I advise against this method and will instead show you how to have much more control over your project by creating individual shots. That's why we also need a separate editing software for the course. Take the camera and drag it to another location to capture a new angle. Render this scene as before and save it in the same folder. Done? Let's close Movizu and open the editing software. Import the two sequences into your composition. In almost any software, you can simply drag the clips from the folder into the project's timeline. Drag the shots next to each other and look for a suitable point to set a cut in the movement of the character so that there is no abrupt interruption of the action, which will look unnatural. This would be a suitable point in my project. Cut away the unwanted rest of the sequences and pull both clips back together so that there will be no black frame when I play them from the beginning. So much for the basics. In a later module, we will go into more detail about editing the shots in the composition. Summary. By using the keyboard and mouse, we move through the scene in Movizu. The menu bar gives us quick access to create characters, objects, lights, and effects to build our set. Almost everything can be edited and customized by double-clicking and accessing the Properties menu. In the Character Actions, you will find countless animation sequences that you can use for your project. Select the appropriate motion and record it using the Record button. Place the camera in the scene to set up an angle for the shot. Then set the markers in the timeline to a specific area to render only the part that we will later use for editing. Finally, we save the scene in a folder on the PC to work with in the editing software. Final exam for this module. Create a small graveyard with spooky atmosphere and use a skeleton that shows off his dance moves. Use red and green light in different spots and add a fog effect to make it look scarier. Use four different camera perspectives. Render each shot out and put them together in your editing software. Your final movie should look similar to this in the end.